In this video, we will explore the high-level design of a type ahead system built to handle Google scale traffic. If you have not seen part one yet, where we covered essential data structures and algorithms behind a type ahead, I recommend watching that first for better context. Hi there, welcome to Tech and Career Bytes. I'm a software professional with over two decades of experience, including seven years in leadership roles at a global product-based organization. A type ahead system enhances user experience by providing real-time suggestions as users type in the search box. Building this system for Google's scale, which handles billions of searches per day, introduces challenges. Let's understand how to address them in this video. Let's start by outlining the key requirements for the type ahead system, both functional and non-functional requirements. The system must provide the top 10 frequent and relevant terms as suggestions. The system should ensure high accuracy in suggesting the most relevant search terms. The response time should not exceed 200 milliseconds. The system should efficiently handle Google's scale, processing around 3.5 billion searches per day. As I discussed in our system design roadmap video, the next step is estimating the storage and bandwidth requirements for the proposed system. Let's walk through a quick estimation process. We will use a back of the envelope approach for this estimation. Let's make a few assumptions for our estimation. Around 1 billion searches among the 3.5 billion a day are unique and need to be stored. Each query consists of an average of 10 characters, with each character requiring 2 bytes of storage. Based on observed patterns of user behavior, most search queries tend to have an average length of 10 characters. With these assumptions, the daily and yearly storage requirements would be 20 GB to store all the unique queries made in a day and storage required per year is 7 terabytes. Now, the bandwidth estimation. We have 3.5 billion queries per day. Each query consists of an average 10 characters and 2 bytes per character. With this, incoming bandwidth is calculated as approximately 6.5 megabits per second. 6.5 megabits per second is the incoming bandwidth for queries with an average of 10 characters length. As our system supports 10 suggestions that are roughly the same length as the query length after each character is typed, the outgoing bandwidth is 650 megabits per second. Let's estimate the number of application servers required. Total read request per second is calculated as 3.5 billion divided by number of seconds in a day, which approximately is 405,000 requests per second. Assuming a single server can handle 8,000 requests per second, the number of servers required is calculated as 50 application servers. This number excludes redundancy, caches, web servers, database servers, etc. Now, let's identify high-level components of the type ahead system. Suggestion component fetches the top 10 suggestions for a prefix. Processor component collects, ranks, and adds the user searches to the tribe and stores them on NoSQL database like MongoDB. MongoDB is best suited for storing tree-like structures. The monitoring and alerting component tracks the success of tasks handled by the processor. For high availability and reliability, we will use load balancers and cache for achieving low latency. We have a separate video diving deep into various load balancing algorithms. Please watch that. To handle query suggestions and updates, we need at least four APIs using microservices architecture. Get suggestions API retrieves the top suggestions based on the given prefix. Log user query collects user queries for future aggregation and processing. Batch aggregate and rank is a batch to process logged queries 
and update their frequency. It also ranks suggestions. This ranking and frequency details are loaded to Cassandra. Cassandra is suitable here as it can store large amount of data in tabular format. Add to try API adds newer frequent queries to the try for future suggestions. As suggested earlier, the system is divided into two main components, suggestions and processor. Let's understand how each works. Suggestion component calls Get Suggestions API to provide relevant suggestions to users. Processor component handles the background operations for managing query logs, aggregating ranking them and updating the try. It does this by calling log user query, aggregate and rank and add to try APIs. This ensures suggestions are kept current and relevant. As the try needs to store data for 3.5 billion searches, it becomes too large to store on single MongoDB node. To handle this, we distribute the try across multiple MongoDB nodes by using consistent hashing. This allows us to evenly partition the try across several nodes, ensuring scalability and fault tolerance. Here is a sample JSON document to store the try in MongoDB. How do we know which partition to look up for search suggestions? We rely on Zookeeper to manage this. Zookeeper helps in maintaining the partition information and directs the request to the appropriate MongoDB node based on the prefix. For a deeper understanding of partitioning, check out my video on partitioning strategies. Now, let's understand how the search flow works. When the user begins typing in the search box, the request is routed through a load balancer to the suggestions service, which invokes the Get Suggestions API. The suggestions service first checks for suggestions in the Redis cache using the provided prefix. This ensures frequently searched terms are quickly retrieved, reducing latency. If the suggestions are not found in Redis, the suggestions service queries the MongoDB. The database is partitioned and partition management is coordinated by Zookeeper, which ensures that the appropriate partition is queried for the relevant suggestions. After retrieving the suggestions from MongoDB, the suggestions service updates the Redis cache to store these suggestions for future requests, further optimizing performance. This step helps reduce the future latency for common queries. Cache is updated internally by the suggestions service without requiring a new API. In part one video, we discuss the need for updating the try. Let's understand how it is done using batch processing. The data pipeline for updates is designed to handle billions of searches each day. This makes it impractical to update the try for every individual query in real time. Instead, batch processing is employed to ensure system efficiency. Rather than immediately updating the try with each query, the system locks user queries for future aggregation and processing. The query logging service records the raw search queries by invoking the log user query API and stores this data in HDFS, allowing the system to batch process data at a later time. At regular intervals, for example, every 15 minutes, the query aggregate and rank service aggregates the logged queries using distributed processing frameworks like Park or MapReduce. Ranking is managed during this batch aggregation phase where the frequency of search terms is computed to determine their relevance and stored in Cassandra. This process ensures bulk data is handled efficiently, reducing system load and maintaining optimal performance. After the aggregation and ranking process, the try update service updates the try with the most frequent and relevant search terms by invoking the add to try API. The try is stored in a NoSQL database like MongoDB 
allowing it to efficiently manage dynamic large scale search terms. By following this approach, we efficiently update the trial while maintaining optimal performance and resource usage. This design also ensures the system can handle updates at Google's massive scale. To ensure smooth operation, we will integrate monitoring and alerting systems that track the success of batch processing and try updates. Here is the complete system design diagram. This architecture distributes the try across multiple MongoDB databases. It employs batch updates and utilizes caching and consistent hashing. As a result, this system, similar to Google's scale, can deliver real-time search suggestions in under 200 milliseconds. Additionally, it can handle billions of queries per day while maintaining both speed and accuracy. This design may not cover every detail of high-scale system architecture, but it can be a solid starting point. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting tech topics. Do check out our other videos on software performance optimization case studies, coding, system design, big data, and career growth. My name is Rupa and I thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.